Hank with Reptile Tour. I want to talk today about the Share Your Hunt Kit. I'll talk a little bit about the history. I'm going to talk about the product and do kind of an unboxing here, show you what you get. And then I'm going to build a little fire ring here and toast a little bit of venison because just talking about Share Your Hunt makes me hungry. All right. I hunted heavily and, and deer hunt with my goddaughters. And I realized something when we did this. And if you are a hunter and you appreciate game, uh, this is for you. I'm not going to get graphic or anything, but when you when you harvest an animal, you do it with you know, honor, you do it with respect, and when you do that and you're working the animal up, it, whether it be a pig or a, a cow or a deer or whatever else you're doing, a lot of times there's kind of a tradition that builds if you kill a hog, you're going to fry the tenderloins and make eggs. Okay, that, that's just kind of known. Uh, if, you're, if you kill a beef, okay, you're going to have some pieces of beef there soon because the work that's involved in working up the animal uh, needs to be replenished and it builds a hunger. And I began to notice this that when I harvested a deer and brought it in and we got him hung and we got everything done and I would take the tenderloins out of the animal that we would take them in and fry them because I was ravenous. There was something about having hunted and ooh, 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 you know being the provider that made me ravenous. Well, we I hunted with my goddaughters, or three of them, beautiful young ladies. Matter of fact, Sarah shows up in one of my videos uh, at, with the, with a share your hunt. She does it so. Um, one evening, we had just harvested a, a, a lovely deer. I was hungry. We built a fire. We opened up a ham. We cut pieces off the ham and skewered them on sticks and roasted them, ran in the house and got a stick of butter and some salt and black pepper. And we feasted right there on the tailgate of a truck. It was a very moving moment. Um, it meant a lot to me to be the provider to have brought the ship to brought the meat to this to have fed my little tribe there um it was just beautiful it really was so i thought wow what do i really need so the next thing i did is i made some skewers and i made this and i made that then i made some forks and i made a set of knives and i found some cutting boards and we turned it into a ritual and um many people uh, who have come in contact with me, I have taken time to share my hunt with them. Now, it really is supposed to occur um, at, with, with, the, with the still warm uh, meat from, from the kill, okay? Cut a block of ham off, cut a block of loin out when you're processing, bring it out and do it. And anymore, if I harvest an animal, I'm just not satisfied until I have time to take part of that animal and honor it properly by eating it and enjoying it and sharing it with my little tribe. Okay, so if you buy the Share Your Hunt kit, okay, you're going to get to follow. You're going to get, oh, look, a little gift from Hank, Fubar Stone, to keep your knives sharp. You're going to get two small cutting boards, okay? These are beach, out of our beach stock. These are the same things we make our knife handles out of. They're incredibly heavy. These will last forever, okay? Good, good parts. You're going to get instructions in the bag, and you're going to get two kiridashis. Okay, now these kiridashis are designed, they're sharp coming out, baby. They are designed to allow your person sharing your hunt. Now, this one is set up for two people. Okay, buy more of them, or I've offered forks for extra. Um, you know, so set up for two diners here. All right, then you're going to get two beautiful forks. Okay, hang on just a minute. The, uh, the handle is a little bit. Okay, there. You're going to get two beautiful forks that are wrapped up lovely for shipping. Okay, and what happens is you have this beautiful set of tools here to share your hunt. Now, what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you in just a minute, we're going to break is I'm going to come back in and in the field, we just slap a rub a stick of butter down there, pour a line of salt, pour a line of black pepper. All right and slap a block of meat on that end of it. All right, straight from our kill. Somebody provides a block of meat. Now what happens is, is now when one of us is in the, inside that little group is lucky enough to harvest an animal, you gotta provide the block of meat and we all have a share of your hunt, okay? It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, you can actually then carve the piece you want off, skewer it on your fork, toast it, roll it off. And this little board here is a clean board. It's kept clean. And you push your meat off here and allow it to cool, okay, while you're toasting another piece of meat. And it's a beautiful kind of cycle to get into. And you get to eat your fill of fresh, fresh venison or fresh, fresh 
whatever meat you're cooking, okay? Now, we added to that, and it tells you in the instructions here, I add to it by adding uh, that sweet Italian roll, sweet Italian bread, we add it. We have um, some onion chopped in big pieces. Uh, sometimes we'll have a bell pepper chopped in big pieces. Uh, but it's primarily meat and possibly a bread. And then the best thing is for dessert, you merely open a can of chunk pineapple and open a jar of maraschino cherries. And until you have slid a chunk of pineapple on each of these and put a maraschino cherry and toasted it and enjoyed that, um, it is sublime and makes a wonderful little sweet for the end of the meal. Okay, now I have sat here and talked about this until I am hungry again. So I'm going to set up a little share your hunt here. If you want to see what this looks like with a group of people, watch the video. Watch uh, Sarah B's share your hunt. And she had just killed a beautiful buck and she brought us some beautiful meat. And we all had a feast. And uh, feeding and providing for my tribe is one of the most satisfying parts of my hunt. Uh, it truly is. So if you share that with me, good. Uh, if you don't, um, I can't argue you out of it, but uh, we hunt and we honor things by hunting them. And if you appreciate that, great. Uh, if you don't, I won't argue with you and I understand that, but um, uh, I'm going to eat some venison from my last kill right now. So I'm going to take a break and then we'll be back with you. I've got a lovely big long video on this, but I just wanted to share the visual on this. And like Justin Wilson, the cooking cake, you said, I wish you had smell of vision and taste of vision because this is awesome. But anyway, your diners are set up. You have a lovely block of venison. You have some butter. You have some salt sprinkled with some black pepper or red pepper or whatever, whatever spins your wheels, okay? You thread on a couple lovely chunks of meat. man that's so good and then you bring it over here now you can build a fire you can use charcoal but some years ago we found out that if you basically just uh, this little gas ring looks like it's been through the wars because there's no telling how many deer have been uh, worked up and, and fed over it you can feed two or three people over a small gas ring like this but you just get in gear and get everything held and you toast your venison that I'm doing. Now you cook it whatever flavor you want. If it ain't done enough for you, stick a fork back in and hold it back over the fire. I posted some cookouts. I wish I could have told people that. But anyway, so what you do is you sear the outside edge very quickly, okay? And then to keep the moisture in and make it beautiful, you come back and you rub it on the butter, just like so. Now this is my little clean area over here, you know, so I'm gonna have it clean. This would be like my clean board. Okay, and then I'm going to add it and the salt and the pepper, okay? And there is such a beautiful series of flames that come off the meat as it sears with just butter and salt and pepper. And I like my venison a little on the rare side, so I'm not gonna cook it too long. And I wish you could smell it, okay? If I, if I could just share the smell a little bit with you there. It's a very beautiful and very primal thing. Oh, and I forgot a minute ago, uh, when I was talking about the bread and the things to have with it, a block of sharp cheddar cheese just, just adds so much to it. So you can be eating, eating bread and cheese and, and freshly toasted venison right here. So this is how I am honoring this animal. And I have put a lovely toasty hot glaze on it. And I'm gonna bring it right over here, okay? And I am going to push that lovely venison off right there, and then I'm gonna reach over here. Now don't touch the fork. The fork will still be hot. So I'm gonna slide some meat on here very gently. Slide a little more meat on here very gently. And toast this. And while I'm toasting, the smell from that is so amazing, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm salivating, okay? So while I'm toasting this one, see if I can't get both hands going here. While I'm toasting this guy, I'm gonna reach over. Mm. 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 Oh man, God. I can eat venison almost as fast as I can cook it this way. So, through the, through the YouTube, I get to share my home with you. So thank you for being a member of my tribe and letting me share my home with you. And I wish you were here because I got a lot of venison and a lot of pork. So you have a good evening. 
and uh, I'm gonna let Juetta finish filming so she can come over here and share my home with me too.